a big yee-haw to the Breeders' Cup action at the Bar Stewards. We've got absolutely tremendous bets and opinions for you on this show. And joining us uh, to add to the first show, we've got Quentin and John, myself, and joining us is Nick Davis. Good evening, Nick Davis. Good evening, Lee. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. And and I know this this meeting means a lot to you because you do a lot of work on this, and um and I, I know for a fact that you want to get off your chest what you what you think about Delmar's turf course at the moment. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You hear all these things about oh, it's a come from behind course on a few a few places. If you look, especially you look at the last two cars. There's hardly any runners in the turf course. I think the biggest field has been 10. And when you look at some of the trials, you'll see six runners, five runners, all that. So what I did, well, they've winded the course as well, which means I think they've taken the rail in because there's no room on the outside. So to save you doing things, I went back and looked at the last <coughs> Breeders' Cup in 2017. I noticed a couple of things. Uh Five out of seven turf races fitted the same bill. Every one of them broke fairly well. Stalked, they were in from third to sixth place. Uh, I'll read my notes here. Uh, Talismanic broke fourth, pounced at the top of the bend. Midnight Storm sat second and third, pounced off the top of the bend. Stormy Liberals sat sixth. Angled out at the top of the bend and come with a one. Mendelssohn started well. Ryan had him on the rail. Uh, Wahida jumped out, fairly thing. And at the top of the straight, hit them. The only two things that didn't happen were a one in a hundred run from Declaration of Peace. If you watch that race back, it was last. And got a, well... A, you look at the race and just see how yeah, it's got a dream run through splitting horses about three or four and you you couldn't a- attempt on that and rushing four was well away wide the outsiders that were in the lead on the rail virtually stopped and it just went past them and she ended up a good filly she finished up second uh in a breeders cup uh, turf I think last year uh breeders cup uh, filly in their turf to Aldiara. so I th- I've been basing my opinions on what kind of trip horses will get. Will they sit in their third to sixth places? And I think getting a run here is paramount. You've got 817 feet to play with you into the straight. So that's not mm. a lot of real estate, is it? No, it's, I mean, the one thing I noticed with, with Delmar that, that obviously people think well, it's similar to Santa Anita. That, that's the mistake that, that they make, that is the short stretch, which means basically closers have to make their moves a lot earlier than what they would say at Santa Anita. Um, but you're doing that I on the bend. That, yeah, you're doing that exactly. on the bend, and that's hard. Uh, so yeah. I, I want to be with people who can sit third to sixth and... Pounce, pounce at the top of the straight or maybe just after, but that's why I'm playing it anyway. And the interesting thing, I mean, the, the, for punters, I mean, there's a few quandaries. Um, if, you, if you're watching this evening, obviously Friday is, is the fir- fir- first evening of Breeders' Cup night, um, and in 2017, there was a dead rail. Um, and I don't know if that'll be the case again, but you never know how they, how they sort of want to soup the track up, but it can create chaos. Lasix will not be allowed for this year's races, which probably is not as significant as in the past because uh, most of these horses run at the Breeders' Cup meeting on haven't been on, on Lasix. But, Nick, what's your view on, on the whip in the underhand or backhand position? Well, it's, gonna affect, it's going to be affect some riders more than others. Um, well, I think they it probably means they're gonna they're gonna go off earlier, doesn't it? They're gonna they're they're right. gonna get their pace earlier and not rely so late. 
Yeah, he, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I mean, it's a good job we haven't got Thrasher Morris over there. They'd kick him out after one. They'd kick him out. The stewards would kick him out. That'd be it. Escorted from the track, sir. None of this here. Um, it's interesting for Tanawa because I, I think she goes especially well for being proper gunned. And uh, uh-huh. face that well back and he, you know, to give her a flick, well, I'd be, I'd be worried at the likely price. Mm. Short enough. Sure enough. I mean, obviously, Tanawa. Uh, yeah. Tanawa benefited from the uh, from the non-runner, um, the, the 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 main market rival um, in that race. Especially but, with but Channel you, Maker coming in, because that means there could be a bit of a more of a war up front. Yeah, yeah, it sort of adds a little bit of pace to the to the race, and and yeah, that that it, it, it's a very interesting enc- uh, 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 race that. But and obviously, we all know Tanawa's the best we, we in that race we know that but like like nick's pointed out you need a good trip and it's not always forthcoming there um so anyway um we'll come into the meeting now with our with our best bets and uh, our panel have our three best bets each for, for the card um so nick um i'm gonna I'm, I'm no i'll wait for your third because uh, you've had the dance floor for a bit john your third best bet please of uh, the breeders cup saturday yeah, I'm probably going to get left out of town here. Um, this is in the Breeders' Cup turf. And uh, I, I have a bit of a theory about your beer. Um, I'm not necessarily sure whether it gets on brilliantly with Buick. Um, I think the horse travels a bit kind of for Doyle and Spencer. And with Tanawa drawn where she is and the threat of dropping in, which, uh, you know, I, I think she's a, a fab spot to make the ground up in that 800-foot eight, straight. So I'm having a speculative punt on Broom, who I think will benefit from Frankie riding. I think there's patches of his farm that put him in amongst these. Obviously, he's, he's not as good as Tanawa, I know that, but he's 33 to 1 for Christ's sake. Um, he, he travels kindly. He, he's been wasted in a couple of races where they've boated him on and all, all the rest of it. He's a nice moving horse. I don't think the ground will be any problem. And I, I, I think he'll outrun his price, if nothing else. So that's Broom, John. You do know the price on Broom is 20s at the moment, but that's only because uh, the horse domestic spending which was obviously one of the, the, the American horses that was obviously strongly fancied has come out. Right. Um, so currently Broom is 20 to 1 available for your third best play. That's a quarter, uh, sorry, a fifth of the odds, four places. Are you, are you interested in that? Oh, that's absolutely fair. I've no, played down to six games, to be honest. Yeah. Are you, are you half a point each way or one point? Half a point each way. Half a point each way for John Broom. That's in the uh, Breeders' <coughs> Cup turf. That's in the 2340, 1140 event at Delmar on Saturday. Okay, Quentin, I'll come to you for your third best bet of the meeting. Uh, for my third best bet, I've gone for just how, Smooth Like a Straight in the um, Breeders' Cup, Cup Mile. It is um, kind of the points that Nick made and everyone's really made. You don't want to be too far back here, so you've got Space Blues, Mother Earth. Um, I, I wanted something on the pace. There doesn't look to be a lot of pace in the race. Um, he's got close form with Mo Forza, who's second favourite and well, a third of the price. Um, I thought he was overpriced. There's a bit of 20s, but generally 14s and 12s. Um, yeah, he should be should be well positioned. Good good draw in two. Um, I think he outrun his price. Good stuff. So that for, for Quentin's third best bet. Smooth like straight. Um, his twenties, Quentin. Uh, that's a, a one fifth four places. Or do you want to go win on this? Win, win on Lee. Oh, I love this. One point win for Quentin. Twenties. Smooth like straight. Bet three six five. Take that price. Um, that's in the uh, Breeders Cup. Um, is that is that the uh, the the the, the, the turf mile? The turf mile. Yeah. Turf yeah. Mile. Good stuff. Uh, Nick, your best, third best bet of uh, Saturday evening. Yeah, this is, this is I, I think I want this on the US tote because I think this will drift. Uh, they'll look at the form and say, oh, one on heavy. Oh, hasn't, hasn't won over the distance. Gets held up. 
and I think they may have it wrong. If you watch the pre-Diane and watch Rougier there, up there, oh, fifth, and then the last half furlong, it ran on really well behind Joan of Arc. Uh, if you look at the pre-Rothschild, ran on well over a mile. I think now it's come into its own and the one mile three will suit down to the ground. I think it will drift. Uh, I think it will take, there's no pace in this, so I hope it takes a handy position like it did it in Chanty. And the French used to have a very, very good record at the Breeders' Cup sending those over, and they don't, don't seem any way perturbed about this ground. So I win only. It'll either be there or, or win or be nowhere. But I think I'll drift out to about 12s, I think you'll get. So is that Rougier in the... Uh... Philly and Mare Turf. In the Philly and Mare Turf, um, that's 10 to 1 available with uh, Paddy Power and Betfair. So, 10 to 1, one point win is for Nick. That's his third best bet of the card. Good stuff. Um, right, my third best bet is in the uh, Dirt Mile. Um, we love a bit of dirt. Um, and um, basically, I, I'm against the favourite here in Life is Good. Um I always think it's worth taking on a Pletcher runner um, in these events because um, Pletcher really does have a poor record in these these kind of races. Um, good trainer, but obviously it's a New York shipper. I think that is sort of understated. Uh, New York shippers tend not to do so good um, in California. And I also think this horse is the best is best when fresh. And life is good. He's dominating the market. Very short price favourite. And I'm very keen on the Stephen Asmussen trained uh, Silver State in this. And that's my third best bet. Um, about the nine to two mark. I think it's this is I, I look Stephen Asmussen and Godolphin at the moment for me have the best medication in North America uh, since Bob Baffert's been, been relegated to the Suns bench. <laughs> Um, and I think Asmussen and Godolphin have got horses that seem to run ridiculously good races, you know, like consistently. And I, and that they're the two trainers I'm concentrating on this meeting. And Silver State, like I said, managed to win uh, six in a row for Asmussen. Again, very well managed. Um, not run b a bad race all year. Gets a lovely pace set up here. The, the favourite will get some pace pressure, here, a lot of it. And because it's a small field, this is the one race I'm happy to back a closer because I do think that the, the pace will be ridiculous on the front end. So Silver State for me, one point win, uh, nine to two is my uh, in the in the uh, dirt mile. Um, I'm just trying to uh, find the time for you now because obviously eight nine two. Yes, that's it. It's the 819. That's the Dirt Mile Silver State one point win. That's my third best bet. Good stuff. Right. Nick Davis, I'm going to come straight back to you then for your second best bet on the Breeders' Cup card. Right. I'll be playing against Quentin here. I think that Smooth Light like Straight won't get to the front in head of blowout and they might hook up for a while. I think the what the best one position in the race will be in love. If you watch the Keeneland Surf race back, broke well, was steadied, showed very good tactical speed. Uh, I think this would be so much traffic in this race coming around the final bend. Uh, Space Blues and Master of the Sea. One of them might get a run. They both might not get a run. Um, I mean, Master of the Sea, if it has some bend form, I, I'd be quite interested in it. It's probably got one of the best lines of form in there in the 2000 Guineas, but it's never been round a bend. Uh, and I can't I really have something coming from way back in this at all. I I think In Love at 12 to 1 is a cracking bet. Um, I really do. I think it's I think it's got the tactical speed. If you look at the Bayers and the whole American field, there's not that much between them. I think Got Stormy's got top, and that's that's drawn very very wide. So In Love for me. In love, in love for Nick. That's in the uh, uh, the, the, the same race. Uh, yeah, the the, the the Breeders' Cup mile. Um, this horse definitely has improved dramatically this year. Um, so it's interesting um, <clears throat> that Nick goes. Since been, yeah, yeah, it goes. It, it's be. I think since the jockey, the ex French jockey, got on board. Yes. 
Um, so what price are we looking at here? Let's check the betting. So we're looking at 14 to 1, Nick, for your selection. Um, you, you can get... Um, uh, I'm happy to give you uh, one-fifth the odds um, for places for your 14 to 1. Is it an each-way bet, or, or are you yeah. on the nose? Oh, the nose. <laughs> this is what we like at last year's two points win. We love this. None of this... None of this each way rubbish. We don't we don't we don't want to collect for second or third. In love for Nick Davis, fourteen to one, two points win. It's his second best bet um, of the meet. Um John Lang, I'll come to you for your second best bet on Saturday. Ask me why I was so quickly onto what time Silver State was running. <laughs> <laughs> it's Silver State. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna flax in this because this was my third we're best. Sadly bet. overlapped again. I mean, anybody <laughs> listening would probably think we've spent our afternoon conferring on this. And we have. No, no, it's true. No, no, we haven't. No, I, we I never just, speak. I just think the shape of the race and the the likely way it's, it's going to be run. I think it, it just has to drop in this horse's lap, really. And uh, I'm uh, I'm really struggling to see it out the first race. So I'm going with a, a point each way on this. I think it's very solid at the price. Do you know what? Like, uh, and the reason I like this bet from John, like each way, because most people say, "Ah, oh, you can't do that, right?" It, John's right that this race will be a pace war, and life is good. Will just blast off the favourite, um, and Jasper Prince, the rag, will probably push it. Um, there's, there's, you know, this will get pushed, no doubt about it. And Silver State will sit off them. And I do think, because of the small field, I do think that I don't think there'll be a problem with trips or anything. And I do think Silver State will run its race. And if life is good, he's a li- he's, he's a couple of points below form. You know, like he's just not quite on its game because it's been. You know, I would. I think that's that's a bad favourite at eight to eleven. Um, and John. Right, right, rightfully, rightfully says, in my opinion, Silver State. So, John Shrewd, one point each way at the four to one mark. So, that's John's second best bet. And now, for my um, embarrassing second best bet, um, well, it's not really embarrassing, really. It goes in the uh, the Philly and Mare turf, and I'm going for love. And anyone that's been listening to my podcast this year, um, you know, like, and, and, and my comments on love. I think this 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 filly's not been quite at her best all year, and but that doesn't matter here because she's in the filly and mare, she's in the filly and mare turf. She isn't going for the you know for the for the main mile and a half event, which Aidan O'Brien would have done, I'm sure, in the past. Um, and I think he's placed her very well here because this won't take much winning. Secondly, there's not much pace in the race, and if you see why Love's been ridden at the Curra. They went forward with her, and I, I think they'll do the same again. They'll, they'll just bound her out, mile and three eighths. They'll bound her out, get a position, and I cannot, I cannot see her getting beat. Honestly, I, I really do like her at seven or two. I, th- I think that's a, a crazy price. Um, I don't think the opposition here, for example, the the, the American horse um, that, that that was put in favourite, um, literally does need a good pace to run at. And, and and to show its best, and I, I just feel that love is a, a tremendous bet, and two points win seven or two. That's that's my second best bet. Quentin, your your second best bet, please. My second best bet comes in the classic, the zero zero forty, um, and I think they're going to get hooked up on the pace. There's going to be a pace duel between Medina Spirit, Bob Baffert's not going to lie down, and Nick's go. And set things up with uh, for essentially quality. The other uh, Brad Cox runner, uh, he should really be unbeaten. Kentucky Derby ended up posted four deep. Uh, looked the moral winner on the day. Uh, I think he'll go our favourite here, to be honest. Um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's the right favourite for me. He's not favourite. Um, he's my second best bet. So, so, so you you think so? So, a bit just just take me through that again. You think Nick's go the pace war. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, and Nick's, Nick's go and um, Medina Spirit. Yeah, so you think essential quality should be favourite? Yep, yeah, I've got essential quality down as favourite. Uh, right. Do I put it in a minute? Just, just under two to one. 
So essential quality um, um, for Quentin, uh, just under two to one. He's currently three to one available with Bet365 Skybet. And there's currently money for this, so th- this could be true Quentin again. Essential quality for the for the classic, the last one where you're struggling to stay stay awake. You've had plenty of of hot dogs. Nick Davis by this time's had six Amstel, um, <laughs> four hot dogs, and and he's really struggling by this time to keep awake. But Quentin's going in with going in balls deep. Essential quality three to one. He says it's favourite. Um, so that's Quentin's two point win bet in the. Uh, 1240. That's the Breeders' Cup Classic. So good selection. Um, right. So we, so we've 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 done um, my selection, John's selection, Quentin's selection. The gin's kicking in. Nick, have we done your second best? We haven't. We? Yeah. Yeah. Dimension just setting in now. John, have we done your second best? We have. Right. So we can move on to our best bets. No, but before that, before that, uh, we have to say that. Um, We've got some interesting selections tonight, Nick. On the, on yes. the prize. Yeah. I'm going to have to time a big price here because I got it uh, <laughs> long. Uh, I got it about oh, five days ago. Uh, the Juvenile, 25 to 1 Oviate class. It's 10s now, but that was when uh, Jack Christopher was in. If you watch the American Pharaoh at Santa Anita, Corniche went, lobbed along the lead, 23-55, 47-26. This sat way out the back, hardly doing anything, not really being ridden that vigorously. Came home, well, to finish third. And if you watch that race back, you'll see why didn't he get going earlier off, a, off, a, off what wasn't a strong pace. And then you see tonight... Corniche drawn right on the outside. There's a couple more that go forward. I think it's going to go over. They're going to move more like 20, 22, 80, 46, 50, 46, 30. And then, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a lot, have a lot more pace on the race. And this has a great chance of coming home. Nick, what's up? What time race this evening for punters? 23. 23.50. Uh, I'll, I'll be just about matchsticks then. <laughs> <laughs> this is three three hot dogs tonight and four Amstel. So Nick's three hot dogs and four Amstel down by twenty three fifty tonight. Um, and Oviat class that Nick's got twenty fives about, and he'll happily tell you that. And but you can get elevens now, bet three six five. But that's the, that's the game. Nick studied these cards for a long time, and he thinks Oviat class will win the twenty three fifty at Del Mar tonight. I've had one bet at Del Mar tonight, and that goes in the the uh, the nine fifty race. That's one timer in the uh, um, the, the sprint there. Um, I, I really do feel one timer if he comes back to his best and breaks out the stalls eight to one. He's absolutely massive. Um, stall nine, not a hindrance because of his early pace. Um, there's a lot of money for Averly Jane, who Lorne Malvo, as one of our contributors, has tweeted in. That's his nap of the meeting. Um, that's been heavily backed nine to four available for that. But I'm with one timer. Um, you know, fuck Lorne Malvo. Um, I'm with a one timer. <laughs> <laughs> in the 9.50 tonight at Del Mar. Um, so, yeah, so that's coming off. Before we go on to our best bets, we now... Um, John, I'm going to come to you for your best bet of, of Saturday. Right. Well, I think we need a box trifecta in the Raiders' Cup now, actually. Um, I'm going for Master of the Seas. And he's got a lovely draw. His guineas run behind Mad Jim's arse. I think that's as good as anything that's on offer. Steers the trip better than Space Blows. And I mean, when you compare the prices, there's absolutely no comparison. I think there's been excuses for this arse. And I like the fact that they're still coming here when they've got the arse like Space Blows. But, you know, I mean, it's a fairly obvious target for space blows but they're, they're persisting with this one it's coming here it's definitely got the farm in the tank to do some damage against this lot and uh, I, I think this will get a nice sit in and uh, I, I can see this going really close 
Fantastic. Master of the Seas. Obviously a, a Guinea's contender early in the year. Um, obviously quite a difficult horse to deal with. But 12 to 1 available. John, are you, are you on the nose or do you want the... Do you, in fact, look at some of these offers. Incredible. I'll have Four, insurance on this, I think. Insurance. Um, I'm going to give you 12 to 1, 5 pegs. Because 5 Gosh. pegs... I know exactly. William Hill, Betfred. These are high street branches. You know, we're not we're not talking, you know, like WhatsApp bookies and India and Tenerife. This is this is William Hill and Betfred. Well, <laughs> you well, get I, tell, I tell you what, if, if this is out the first five, I, I'll drop five swear words from me rant about random on Sunday night. <laughs> there you go. So that's that, John. That, John, that only leaves you seven. It doesn't. <laughs> Delay, mate, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John is is one point five points each way. It's his best bet, master of the seas, twelve to one, five pegs, five pegs, more pegs than a cribbage board. So John, John at twelve to one, he's happy with that um, for his each way play of the meeting. Quentin, I'm going to come to you for your very, very best bet of Breeders' Cup night. My best bet of Breeders' Cup night comes in the distaff, and I want to oppose the favourite, the true scar. Um, looks to be a stack of pace on here. Um, her efforts aren't particularly spectacular on the clock. Second favourite, Malafat. Oh, I've got a concern about the trip with her. Um, so my best bet goes on Royal Flag. Um, she came behind the true scar two starts back. Um, it was a Strong pace up front, which would have suited Royal Flag, but pace was holding up that day at Saratoga. Um, she then came out and beat Horologist, I think it was, last time out, quickening clear off of steady fractions. And she just looks like a mare, like right at the top of the game, in love with the game. And um, yeah, I, I'm quite keen on her tomorrow. Um, tomorrow? It is tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it tomorrow is. To, to win. Um, yeah. yeah. Eight to one, that's 15 in. to two. I think she's a chunky, chunky price. Um, eight eight yeah. to one for you. Eight to one for you, William Hill. Um, yeah. are, are, are you three points win? Three points win. On the nerves. We love it. Quentin, this is this is what we like. Three points win for all flag. Quentin, that's in the uh, Breeders' Cup distaff at the 11 o'clock tomorrow. And I, I, for what it's worth, I agree with Quentin. I think Latruska needs to be taken on tomorrow. Um, I think she'd be at the two. I, I've got a, yeah. her, her, yep. her on, on top of, I think, Clarier's improved and Manathom. I want to do some uh, exactors with the uh, Royal Flag on top of those two. Yeah, I, th I think Quentin's made a good choice there. I really do. I think Royal Flag, Clarier, um, even I, I wouldn't even put anyone off on that as time goes by at 28 in that either. Um, I, I do think Latrushka and Malatha need taking on in that, and that's the first two in the market. And we love taking on the short prices, uh, which is what I'm not doing for my best, for my best, for my, for my best bet. I'm a disgrace, really. I mean, this is this is turned to a disgrace. You guys have caught some tremendous, tremendous choices, and what do I do? I've I've caught with my my three pointer as Jackie's warrior in the uh, in in the sprint. I mean, God, God, that took some picking. Um, five to four chance. I, I, to be honest, I just think this is just elementary. This is this is Sherlock Holmes elementary, my dear Watson. I mean, how is this five to four? I mean, you can set your clock by this horse. This is the best printer that there is. It, it just it, it's not going to get beat. It, it sounds blogger esque. So I'm going to cut this short because I do sound like blogger. Um, it, it, it's a three point win bet for me. Five to four's value. I would have this odds on. Um, Jackie's Warrior for me is just simply and away the best source in the race. And unless there's belly ache, it wins. It's that simple. Um, so yes, I, I'm ashamed. Nine thirty eight Delmar, the Breeders' Cup Sprint is my uh, my my three point call. So Nick, I'm coming to your uh, very best bet of the meeting. Well, I've already backed this at eleven, but it's not that much shorter. Well, I'm looking at the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. And Lieutenant Dan at 11s I've backed. I think this has got the ideal draw. It will be clear of the three uh, UK or UK Irish runners. It'll have golden power with a target on its back. 
it's still overpriced over here at uh, seven and eight to one because I think it will be favourite. If you listen to the US comment, they don't rate Golden Powell's time figures at all. And it, no. you look at Wesley Ward's record with older horses. I think he's had one winner in these Breeders' Cup winners a long time ago. Judy the Beauty, I think it was. And I think it goes off. The, it's got early pace. It's two from two at Del Mar. It's got a late kick as well. It sits off Golden Powell. If you look at the our, our runners over here, uh, Glass Slippers hasn't been quite in the form, and it's got it had five and a half furlongs. It got it got at, uh, Keeneland, and now it's back to five. A case of you took all the straight to get through get uh, Longchamp on heavy ground. I don't know what it's going to do on this kind of ground. Emma Arciana could be the best of ours, but uh, round a bend at there, we don't know. I think it's got everything going for it, Lieutenant Dan. Win only. That's my best bet. Three points on the nose, Nick. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to get 10 to 1, bet 365. 10 to 1. Yeah, no, that, that'll, that'll, that'll do lovely. And, and there's been good money for this horse. So, I mean, Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, for Nick, for Nick that's, his, that's his best bet. Right, we've, we've, we've covered off the best bet. So, we've We've, we've, we've bared all. Um, I've done my blogger impression um, with my three best bets. The biggest price I've gone for on a, on a Breeders' Cup night is nine to two. Um, you know, I've embarrassed myself. It's disgraceful, considering the amount of time I've put into this. And um, so, but I hope you, I hope every, all our listeners have, come, have, have, have listened to this and uh, have formed your own opinions on this because some of our experts here, Nick, Quentin, John, have caught with some nice selections here. So... What will you be backing? Um, right, we're going to cover off the uh, main races now uh, for the Breeders' Cup night. And we're going to start with um, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Um, so that's the one I've tipped in, which is the, and John. Did, did any of you folks have any opinion on the Dirt Mile? No. Nothing, nothing from me. Nothing at all? Nothing to... To sort of hang on to, or you know, so me and John are silver stated. This, this, this could have been John. This could have been a um, a Bastard special again, but um, I'm, I've kind of refrained from doing it because we had one on the first show, um, so that, that that was the reason. Um, the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint, um, the race before over five furlongs that Nick's just on about. I mean, uh, Nick, do you think glass slippers that's going to struggle with the bend? No, it's not. It might. It's not as quite as. Uh, it's, it's sharper than Keeneland, but you know, she acted well enough at Keeneland. But it was just. I think it's five and a half at Keeneland. It's five here. Um, it's much firmer than it was. It was a bit of give. Yeah, it was a bit. I think it was good. I think it says firm. I think it, it wasn't that as firm as it will be now. Uh, here, I just think she hasn't been in the same form. I think it will be hard to back to back. Yeah, no, no, it's fair enough. Um, so we go on to the um, the the, the mile and three eighths race, which is obviously the the the, the race where me and John are very keen on love. Um, I mean, what are you chaps saying in the mile and three eighths race? For me, I was keen to oppose love. Um, I don't think she's been the same this year. I'm not sure they're going to get her back. Um, I, I quite like the American horse who's drifted now. Um, more like goddess. Um, she was yeah. one for me in the race. Um, Rougier, I was concerned about the ground. It's well, best, best form on soft ground. It's by territoire. It doesn't really move like a soft ground horse. Um, also held up in a, a race that doesn't, it doesn't look to have a lot of pace. So I, I get your point about, Love being set handy. Um, but Warlike Goddess, it's, I, I quite like the draw in seven. Uh, it's a good traveller, which should help in regards to not having a horse that has to respond to pressure, respond to pressure around the bends. Um, I thought she should be favourite for the race. Um, or there hasn't, hasn't particularly wowed me this season either. She's kind of looked a bit dead and a bit gone. Um, so, yeah, it was the, it was the American one for me. Yeah, 
No, no, no interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I, I did think the American horse might struggle for a, a decent trip, given the pace out. But you never know. I mean, the, these things can work out differently. Um, R- Rougier, obviously, is Nick's selection. Um, Nick, you're not bothered about the ground at all? No, they're not bothered around the ground. If you look at her action, it doesn't scream soft ground. Uh, when you look at the pre-Diane, uh, the Doe V, the pre-Rothschild, no, she can handle, I think she can handle, I mean, she'll handle it fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay, we'll move on to the uh, Breeders' Cup Sprint. Obviously, my best bet, the, the probably the blogger. You'll probably see blogger uh, klaxon in this uh, around 9.15pm uh, um, tomorrow night. You will be uh, you want. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a kiss of death. Um, yeah, so uh, Jackie's warrior for me, obviously, I, I just think uh, by far and away. Any opinions on this, guys? Do you, did you, did you have any? No, not really. It's too good no, for Jackie's warrior. Yeah, John? The, the stallion will be seeking out a crack then after this race, probably. The stallion <laughs> might get the folding gear out for this, you know. Yeah. I, 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 the money yeah. clip will definitely be coming off, won't it? So yeah. We'll be yeah. seeing uh, what happens there. Yeah. Right, OK. So we go on to the uh, the Breeders' Cup mile. John, obviously, very keen on Master of the Seas. Um, um, uh, Nick, Nick, we, we, hang on. Uh, Quentin, in love. Was, yeah. Did, Quentin, were you, were you Mo Forza in this? Uh, smooth like straight. That's it. That's the one. Um yeah, so so we've basically we've basically got plenty of selections in this. Um, for me, I just was against Space Blue because primarily I, I think this horse has been better over seven and over the mile. I know it's a sharp mile, but I'm I'm just not convinced. I'm just really not convinced at the prices. I think nine to four is very very. I short, think the break so the break's all important. And John's has got a really good chance if him if it if they held if they hold it up, I'll be disappointed with them. If if Master Seas gets in midfield and gets a run up the rail, he has a good chance. I'm just, I was just concerned about the rail. I might do some exactors because Smooth Like Silk's going to be sitting second behind Blowout, I'd imagine, and she'll then blow out coming the, the minute. He'll, he'll have the run of the race. I'm just hoping in love with a tactical speed will be in in behind him. Yeah, yeah no, too right. Some good, some good choices there. Um, right, so we'll move on from that. And we'll go to the 11 o'clock event, which is the uh, Breeders' Cup Distaff. Obviously, we've touched on this. Uh, Royal flag uh, for Quentin. Um, I did think Clarier would, would be big. In fact, like there's two barns that I'm, I'm sort of following over the two nights. And I do stress to punters that you need to watch tonight's action at, at, at Del Mar just to get, you know, gain some kind of track by its stables it's in form, not in form, because I do think that's important for all the runners. I mean, you know, it really is. If if a, if a stable starts to hit winners, you know the feed's right, you know the medication's right, and that's that's where you move forward. But Clarier, I thought was 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 was, was interesting for Stephen Asmussen. Any extra thoughts on the on on this chaps? Yeah, I agree. Agree entirely. I'm going. I'm going the try to get the forecast. I was playing Clarier, uh, second favourite, and Royal Flag. Yeah, I, I did. I did like Royal Flag. Quentin made a good good point on that. John, anything from you on this? I wouldn't argue with the two experts, <laughs> especially Davis. Um, right. So the eleven forty. That's the the Breeders' Cup turf, the mile and a half event. Um, so views here, please. I I backed Tiona before the draw. Unfortunately, I I think. Uh, I think she's a lovely filly. I think that. She's got a great future. It's going to be very hard from her, especially with the three pace setters. If she can get out well and get into fourth or fifth behind behind the pace, I mean, Channel Maker, Cribiera, uh, whatever it is, Cribuban and a climax, Walton Street will be fourth. If she get out fifth, she has a she has a chance. Um, if they they could be a pace war though, which will help Tarnama. Yeah, that will help Tarnama. I tell you what, if it was this was a big thing like sort of Belmont, I'd love the uh, German horse on on pace and ground. I think that's if you watch the German the Deutsche Derby, I think that would be crying out for good ground and a pace. Uh, the German horse, which would be Sisyphan, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Jamora takes them out. 
Hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I do think this this turf is absolutely wide open. Really, really is one of the most wide open turf uh, races we've had. And John, you you've tipped Broom. Yeah, I just think it will benefit from the run of the race and Frankie riding it, and it actually been trying to try and win a race rather than spoil a race. Yeah, Quentin, Quentin, would you would you like if Tanar was eleven oh eight six to four? Would you are you a backer or a layer, or, or are you on the gin? Uh, what's time? Uh, yeah, gin. Um, <laughs> I, told, when I tried to break down the race, it, the starting point was Tanawa. She's the best horse in the race. Um, but she's drawn in the car park, the way the track is. 11 away, I couldn't back her 11 away. Like, no. it's, it's, it's asking for trouble. It's asking for, you know, one of them ones where you're, you're held up, you find a little bit of trouble and you're, you're, you're swearing at the TV because you finished the fast finish in second. It's, it screams that. Um, I think I'll play a few exotics on Wharton Street, uh, Broom, and, uh, and the German horse. Um, but Tiona, Tiona's a hard puller. I don't particularly like her as a second favourite either. Um, so throw a few exotics at it and ho- hopefully catch something. Good stuff. Um, so we move on to the classic where Quentin selection uh, essential quality. Um, I do like. I really do. I do. I do like that choice. Um, like like there's, 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 there's two corporations I'm following at this meeting it's Stephen Asmussen and Godolphin like I said I, you know like I said Bob Baffert might come off the subs bench and 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 blast everybody into in, in, into the moon with with the with with the with the medication we don't know but this is the thing I I, I do like Godolphin this summer and I like Stephen Asmussen and I do like that selection from from Quentin any any thoughts on the classic chaps I just like to ask some opinions do we think uh watching the Belmont back that the extra extra distance beat Hot Rod Charlie. Do you think the winner there would have beat him at at, at, at ten? Mm. Good point. Yeah. I mean, I like. I'm just saying I mean, that behind the if Hot Rod gets uh, gets involved with too much of the pace, it could be if Hot Rod's a length off him, would he get a better run than Essential Quality coming in? It's a, it's a fair point, and, and I think this is the thing with, with Delmar in terms of like trips. I mean, I mean, this, like Quentin said, will be run at a at a terrific gallop. I mean, I mean, there's no, there's no question. I mean, I, I'm interested to know the form of the Brad Cox horses going into this because, like I said, I, I want to like, like I want to see that that Brad Cox's horses are running running the right races because at the end of the day. When you've got New York shippers, you, you've you, you, et cetera, et cetera. Nick's Gurgus forward. Um, I, these these are the questions that need answering before I play. It's quite difficult, really, to play on the classic until you see the form of the stables on the meet. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and also you know, the track. If they do super have a super Saturday, you know they something's on Saturday. Just about up on Friday, they soup it up something rotten. They want they want track records. They do. They do. That's that. Yeah, they, 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 they do this a lot. I mean, I mean, I mean, like I said, the, the dead rail in 2017. You know, they they love a track record. Do the Americans? Look what they did at Keenan last year with when Nick's go set ridiculous fractions in the dirt mile and still yeah. got home. Yeah, and kept going. Exactly. I mean, this is this is where I say to punters and listeners tonight, you really need to watch tonight. This is the most informative because it will it will possibly change your bets. Yeah, it will probably change your bets. If you see something that you think, well, that 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 rail, you can't win on the rail, or you can't win on the front, or you can win, or you can't win from behind. It, that that's what you know. It'll take you into Saturday with a better opinion. So so we're doing this preview show the best we can. Uh, on form, etc. But, but as I said, things can change. Um, so, any other business? Any anything to add the, 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 than what we said? No, I've just got the... nothing. No, John, any more? Just me sat with a chili dog and me sat star spangled <laughs> pan. <laughs> yeah, vest pants, vest pants, Amstel, chili dog, one of these big two foot long frankfurters with uh, lots of mustard. Um, and and chili etc. Yeah. I've actually, I've actually 
someone gave me a case of Budweiser. I haven't drink drunk this since the year dot. I could probably drink <laughs> twelve of them without any uh, getting out of first gear. But <laughs> it's no good, Nick. Really, Amstel's five percent. Budweiser's no yeah. good. It's no good to anyone. Um, you know, uh, there we go. So. There's nothing else to add. We we hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, we've given our best bets for uh, the, the Del Mar meet. And we hope you have a great weekend. We've hopefully covered it off. We've got a Barstow special on the first show. Me and John are back on Sunday um, with some ranting. Uh, and you don't want to miss this one because John is re- really chomping at the bit. I'm really um, on. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be a corker. So don't miss that. Um, We thank you uh, from Nick, from Quentin, from John, myself, for joining us tonight. And hope you have a great weekend. Bye for now.